Hello everyone. So today we will be continuing our discussion on uh, contraceptives, and we were discussing about temporary method. And we will in this video we will mainly discuss about intrauterine contra contraceptive device IUCD. The IUCD have been used worldwide. It is safe, effective, and reversible method of contraception. The uh, the efficacy of IUCD are usually comparable with surgical sterilization, and uh, talking about the different types of contraceptive, uh, different type of IUCD. We have three generation of IUCDs. First one is, uh, first one include inert IUCDs like lipase loop. They are no longer used now. Second generation contraceptive include copper T, copper T 380A and multi load 375. The, uh, the second generation contains the copper containing IUCD and third generation contains hormone containing IUCD include that uh, that is Mirena. Levonorgestrel intrauterine system LNG IUS. Here the copper T is uh, copper T 380A is commonly used contraceptive. The amount of copper that comes out of this device on a daily basis uh, that amounts to less than that is ingested in normal diet. And the hormone containing IUCD is either release the progesterone proge progesterone progestasort or levonorgestrel and they are they are used they are they have been used and so first of all let's talk about in detail in about uh, some co some iucd devices so this is copper t 380a it is a medicated device containing copper it carries 380 millimeter square of copper in total so that is why it is called copper t 380 because it contains 380 mm square of copper in total here the vertical steam is uh, wrapped up with 314 millimeter square of fine copper and each arm has 33 mm square of the copper 33 33 and 314 that uh, 314 that amounts to 380 millimeter square of copper and some of this is three, 380 millimeter square the two is the two string extend from the base of the steam the steam of this uh, the steam of this device is made up of the polyethylene frame this is polyethy polyethylene frame this white color and the two they, these are two thread that are used for detection and removal of, removal of the device and in spite of copper being radio opaque additional barium sulfate is incorporated in this device the device is replaced in every 10 years and 10 years however this copper t380 a device has been used to prevent pregnancy for 20 years also in some cases and women women desiring for the continued contraception the existing device can be removed at the end of the schedule time and the new device can be inserted during the same time so the removal and the insertion can be done at the same time Uh, apart from use of copper tea as contraceptive uh, it is used uh, it is used following synecolysis to prevent recurrent adhesion formation also and uh, and that was about copper tea so next is we have this this is called multi load 375a this is also copper containing icd this is multi load 375a the multi load 375a is a that is it is a device that is available in sterilized sealed packet with an applicator there is no introducer and no plunger it has 375 millimeter square surface area of copper wire wound around in its vertical steam well, it only in its vertical steam there is copper uh, here in copper 380a there was a uh, copper in both uh, these three steam um, in the horizontal as a well, vertical steam yeah, but here only in the vertical steam there is uh, there is copper wire and the replacement is usually re replacement of multi load device is done in every five years it was done in 10 years it, it was for five years <coughs> and next one is we have levonorgestrel containing an intrauterine system that is lng ius lng ius it is a t-shaped uh, again it is a t-shaped device with polydimethyl polydimethyl siloxane membrane around the steam polydimethyl siloxane 
memory in around the stream which act as a steroid reservoir this is a steroid reservoir the total amount of levonorgestrel is 52 milligram and it is released at the rate of 20 microgram per day every day it is related it is released at the rate of 20 microgram per day but total progesterone that is levonorgestrel is 52 milligram 52 milligram and the device is replaced every seven years this device is replaced every seven this is 10 5 7 and <clears throat> and and also but uh, it is approved for for five years it can be re replaced at seven years but uh, approved for five years and the efficacy is comparable to its realization operation and it has many other non-contraceptive benefit also and the uh, we have some other I I LNG IOD like Kailina and Skyla also. So that was all about uh, LNG IOS. Now we will talk about the most important aspect of this video uh, in this topic that is the me mechanism of action of intrauterine device. The mechanism of anti fertility effect of all IUCD is not yet very clear, but uh, it they act prominently in the uterine cavity and they do not in, in, inhibit ovulation unlike oral contraceptive pill they do not inhibit ovulation they have both pre and post fertilization effect uh, so they are effective immediately after insertion so so probable mechanism of action are like biochemical and histological changes in the in, endometrium they, there is some non inflammatory non-specific inflammatory reaction along with biochemical changes in the endometrium after this insertion and this accumulate throughout the, uh, the throughout the uterine lumen cervical canal and the fallopian tube this affect the function this affect the function and viability of gamete thus the it prevents fertilization and it reduces the chance of zygote formation and implantation so they they prevent fertilization in degree chance of zygote formation and they also prevent implantation Due to the biochemical and histological changes, they produce non specific inflammation and they affect function of viability of gamete, also prevent fertilization, decrease chance of cycle formation and implantation. So, that is also the lysosomal disintegration from the macrophage attached to the device uh, liberates prostaglandin, which are toxic to spermatozoa. The macrophages cause phagocytosis of spermatozoa, and that is another method. Of And the next mechanism of action is endometrial and inflammatory response. And they decrease sperm transfer and they impede the ability of sperm to fertilize the ovum due to endometrial inflammatory response. They decrease sperm transfer. And the copper dis device and the copper device has the uh, the copper device uh, the ionized copper has additional local anti fertility effect by they by preventing the blastocyst implantation through enzymatic activation in enzymatic interference the copper initiate the release of cytokine which are very cytotoxic uh, the serum copper is but serum copper is not increased the copper ion they impede the uh, they prevent the, they impede the sperm transport and viability of the viability in the cervical mucus they they inhibit the the copper ion inhibit the sperm transport and viability also they have local and they have local and fertility effect due to and prevent blastocyst implantation that was the addition mechanism in the copper device and uh, these action of iod prevent the sperm to reach the tubes and there is no fertilization these action mm, they prevent sperm transport and they in inhibit fertilization and we have next uh, labor norgestrel interuterine system that is mirena uh, Mirena, uh, their mechanism action like they in, they induce very so strong and uniform suppression of endometrium. They are very uniform and suppress and uniform and strong suppression of endometrium. The cervical mucus become very thick and scanty. Uh, sorry, very thick and scanty, and they they impede the sperm motility. They again they they, they interfere with sperm motility. And the sperm cannot reach to the upper genital tract, and they can there cannot be fertilization. So that was about the mechanism of action of uh, Mirena. And, and additionally, they also the Mirena also reduce the tubal motility, and also they increase the 
and they but the, these level uh, lng ios have very they do not have uh, effect on hypothalamic pituitary axis and so uh, there is ovulation occurs and there is no interference with ovulation so we will talk about uh, contraindication for insertion of intrauterine device so there are various contraindication and uh, we will see this one by one in the pregnancy or suspected pregnancy we do not insert iud in the undiagnostic genet undiagnosed genital tract bleeding we do not use iud in acute pelvic infection uh, in acute pelvic infection that is current or within the three month of duration we cannot we cannot use iud this iud distortion of shape of uterine cavity due to uh, like in fibroid and congenital my, my uterine malformation in the severe dysmenorrhea in the known or suspected uterine or solvigal neoplasia in postpartum or post abortal endometritis in last three months or infected abortion in in current sexually transmitted infection current or within three months in the trophoblastic disease and significant immunosuppression so these were the contraindication of the iud so mainly in the pregnancy bleeding pelvic infection distortion of shape dysmenorrhea suspected or non malignancy infection malignancy distortion of shape pregnancy all these are very you can remember all this thing and the copper tea additional contraindication like in wilson disease we cannot use copper copper tea and in copper allergy also we cannot use copper tea so that was obvious these are related to the wilson disease due to the defect in copper metabolism so that was all and in lngis we cannot use lngis in hepatic tumor or hepatocellular disease if there is current breast cancer then we cannot use this and since severe arterial disease we cannot use lngis <clears throat> so this was about contraindication so what is the time of insertion of copper tea uh, that is uh, first one we have interval the interval and post abortal and immediate postpartum in interval we we insert the iud usually after six weeks after delivery the when the insertion is made in the interconceptional period beyond six week following childbirth or abortion beyond six week following childbirth or abortion uh, it is preferable to insert two three days after this period is over but it can be inserted at any time during the cycle provided that she is not pregnant it can be safely inserted even during the menstrual phase which can has certain advantages like in menstrual we, they, we, they, in menstrual phase we have open cervical canal distended uterine cavity there is less cramp so it is we can also safely insert during menstrual phase however uh, during the lactational amenorrhea la lactational amenorrhea it can be inserted at any time and the in post abortal immediately following the termination of pregnancy by suction evacuation or dilatation and curatus or following spontaneous abortion the additional advantages of preventing uterine syneca can help in motivation for in insertion so uh, the copper insertion after post abortal period has dual advantages of preventing uterine syneca as well as preventing under as well as this contraceptive benefit uh, and we have and copper tea can also be used as emergency contraception up to five days following the unprotected coitus in the for in the immediate postpartum we have the post placental uh, within the 10 minute after in expulsion of fetus expulsion of placenta following the vaginal delivery we have the intra cesarean insertion during the cesarean delivery after removal of placenta and before closure of the uterine incision within 48 hours within 48 hours after delivery before the patient is discharged from the hospital in the extended postpartum in the extended postpartum interval between 48 hours to 4 weeks any time after 4, four weeks so that was about insertion now we will see about complication of iud uh, the immediate complication of uh, iud device insertion is the cramp like pain it is transient but at times severe and usually lasts for about half hour half an hour to one hour it is relieved by analgesic and like ibuprofen so we can give the ibuprofen before insertion so uh, next is syn syncopal attack due to pain and syncopal attack are more often found in non-liparous women uh, so 
this can be problematic in the cardiac disease patient and the partial or complete perforation and it is due to faulty insertion technique we have some remote compli uh, complication like pain the pain is more or less proportionate to degree of myometrial distension and the uh, abnormal menstrual bleeding the excessive bleeding involves increased menstrual blood loss prolongation of the prolongation of duration of period and intermenstrual bleeding the patient may become anemic especially who is already anemic the iron supplement is advocated and tranexamic acid may be given for the short term relief in the menstrual in the bleeding and it, it should be noted that the menstrual loss is much less with the use of third generation iod and the women using lng ios have less uh, blood loss next is next uh, com complication is pelvic inflammatory disease the risk of developing pelvic inflammatory device with the use of current device is not increased the modern iod have monofilament string that do not increase the risk of, risk of infection Asymptomatic low risk women do not need additional screening before IUD insertion. And so, inf infection with gonorrhea, chlamydia, rarely with actinomyces can be seen. And the uh, women, women at risk of STD should be screened either before or at the time of IUD insertion. The women with existing infection like purulent vaginal discharge, adnexal tenderness, cervical, ten cervical motion tenderness, uh, these uh, laboratory te testing should be done in this woman and the IUC insertion is delayed. The newer IUCD reduces the risk. The woman with IUCD in situ diagnosed with the pelvic infection, removal of IUC, IUCD is advised if there is no response to treatment even after 72 hours. <coughs> so there can be a next is spontaneous uh, expulsion. But uh, these three pain, abnormal menstrual bleeding and pelvic infantilization. These three are the main factor related to the discontinuation of intrauterine device. These three are main complication. And next, next we have spontaneous expulsion, uh, usually during first month following insertion, or more commonly during the period. Uh, so that was about uh, that. And the but the newer newer IUD have very less got less expulsion rate. Next is we have the perforation of uterus. It is very rare and it incidence is about 1 in 1000 insertion. Mostly seen in breastfeeding women. And the copper device can cause addition with surrounding structure due to uh, a copper device can produce intense local inflammatory reaction and that can cause coordination with surrounding structure. So there is a pregnancy rate with uh, pregnancy rate with device in situ is very rare. The lowest pregnancy risk rate are observed with copper T380A and Levonorgestrel IOS system. When the pregnancy occur with a device in situ, there is the risk of ectopic pregnancy. The IOCD can prevent uterine, but they do not prevent ectopic pregnancy. What are the indications for removal of IOCD? Like IOCD are removed if there is persistent uh, irregular uterine bleeding and if there is flaring of salpingitis, if there is perforation of uterus and if the, if the IUD has come out partially, partial expulsion and the, in the pregnancy occurring with device in situ woman, and the woman who are desirous of a baby uh, and after one year of menopause it can be removed. So let's move on to the advantages of IOCD. They are inexpensive. The copper tea are distributed free of cost through government. And uh, they, they are simple in technique of uh, insertion. They are cost effective. They are prolonged contraceptive pro protection even for 5 to 10 years. And they are suitable for rural population of developing country. The systemic side effects are very less. And they are suitable for in high potency patient in the patient with breastfeeding women and epileptics and the reversibility of fertility after removal is very prompt the risk of 
ectopic pregnancy is also perilous and pelvic inflammatory disease is also perilous and the non contraceptive benefit especially there are non contraceptive benefit especially with lng iud there is significant reduction in menstrual blood loss menorrhagia dysmenorrhea premenstrual tension syndrome and they can be used in the treatment of uterine hyperplasia adenomyosis endometriosis uterine leiomyoma in this condition lng iug are so now let's read some what what we have discussed up to now from the book so let's discuss the summary part so mode of an anti fertility effect of iucd are non specific inflammatory reaction along with biochemical bi gametotoxic agent changes in the endometrium as we have already said non specific inflammatory reaction along with bio biochemical changes in endometrium the copper device release ionized copper that prevent blastocyst implantation lng ivs suppress endometrium and they, as they make cervical mucus scanty we have discussed this three mechanism action of iucd the introduction of iucd copper is opd procedure with no anesthesia taking full aseptic precaution there with no touch insertion technique the iucd is an effective method of contraception with failure rate of 0.5 to 2 women the sw sway it is also the most effective method of pregnancy emergency contraception it can be used by non lipara women iud containing less than 300 mm square copper have higher failure rate the irre irregular and heavy bleeding may be the side effect and reason for removal the third generation iucd have higher efficacy and reduced side effect the risk of ectopic pregnancy is also reduced the contraception to insert contraindication to insert insertion of iud are pelvic inflammatory disease suspected pregnancy dysfunctional uterine bleeding suspicious suspicious cervix the failure rate is about 0.5 to 2 as as w y there is risk of cervical pregnancy in 1 to 2 percent the third generation iud have minimal side effect and lowest pregnancy rate the immediate complication of iud are pain syncopal attack and uterine perforation the remote complication include pain abnormal uterine bleeding pelvic infection and spontaneous expulsion and even perforation of uterus indication of removal of iud are excessive uterine bleeding clearing of pelvic infection uterine perforation pregnancy missing thread patient desire as a baby there are many reason for missing thread and management depend on whether it is within uterine cavity or within peritoneal cavity apart from computer contraception iud is mainly used at emergency contraception and following synecolysis the replacement time for copper t to 200 b is 4 years multi load is 250 multi load 250 is 3 years copper t 380a is 10 years multi load 375 is 5 years lng ivs is 5 years lng ivs has many non contraceptive health benefit it is very safe and effective method of prolonged use so thank you that is all about copper t uh, about iucd and so next time next in this next video we will discuss about steroidal contraceptive thank you